You know, Doc said um, he was Sanukis. Not just a system, but Sanukis is something different. Many um, of uh, his students and admirers of him uh, consider that they teach Sanukis. Well, um, I, I just have to say that I, I understood when Doc passed, a little while after he passed, what he meant by he was Sanukis. Um, you know, because Doc taught us, you know, how to be ourselves. He taught us, you know, to um, allow our own expression. So the expression that came into this world, which was named Moses Powell, Dr. Moses Powell, the creative side of Dr. Moses Powell, the man, was Sanukis Ru, Jiu Jitsu. So in, in his, his um, uh, application of uh, his spiritual connection with the God presented us with Sanukis. So we have looked at it as a, as a system of training, um, which is really um, just a system of knowing him, who Dr. Moses Powell was and who he is, if you understand. I looked all over the place and I saw Moses Powell at St. John Patricia Center in Brooklyn. And I said, this is the guy I want to practice with. And I started practicing with Moses Powell. Moses Powell was a tremendous, remarkable, scientific, and reflective martial artist. He could teach you how anybody how to do this differently. He was very talented and he was very smooth, graceful, and deadly. But he also teaches us to be conditioned. We have to have conditioning, training hard, hard, hard. We worked on sweat all over the place. We was on the mat for, for long hours, two, three hours sometimes, training hard. The guys now, in the new, the new people in Smilkers, they don't try to train us that hard anymore. Because they, don't, they don't even remember or even know how, how we really start training. So, so, so the, the young people don't have too much information on moving forward, really. They just say that they do, but they don't really don't have it. I don't think so. But I felt he spent too much time in martial arts. That's what make him great. He was he was given, he was loving. Sometimes he would give people the show of his back. Some people didn't have no clothes, he gave them his clothes. Yes, that's that's part people don't know about. You see? He was very good and very kind. Yeah. He was a tough guy too. <laughs> he was a tough guy too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people call him the gentle giant. What would you say to these new students? Uh, and, and those who have started or started with him uh, at a later time, what would you say to them and, and that, that would help them to move forward and be better martial arts? They have to follow the system of the traditional system of martial arts, which means protocol. Protocol is the order of things. The, 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 from, the, from, the, from the young people, they come to the elders. The elders in the Sukhus family, they have to learn from them. And somehow, Follow, follow the advice and direction and t training, teaching. So the Moomba's one of the ones who was there when, when it didn't have a name. They didn't, they, it wasn't called Sanukas. It was called uh, Self-Defense Complete or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't know how, how the depth of the training that we used to do because I just thought it was the norm. Um, 
this is what this particular gentleman who's training, he's at Lucas as well. He used to do a horse dance with 60 pound weights on his back for a whole hour. Now, it's difficult for, for us to get a student to stand for five minutes in a horse dance with his hands up. I mean, the, the, one, of the, one of the things that uh, Grandmaster Lumumba said to me when they met, he said, he said, you know what the secret to Sanukas was? He says, it was the conditioning that you was in. Because every time you got on the mat with Grandmaster, and everybody can attest to this, you took a legitimate 24 carat beating. So you had to be in the condition to be able to take whatever it is because you couldn't give what you couldn't take. And today, a lot of people want to go to heaven, but nobody don't want to die. Nobody don't want to put that effort for us no more. Moses had very fluent, uh, articulate, uh, uh, dynamic movements. Uh, angles, uh, redirections, but in terms of what he brought to the experience of martial art, his art was a very formidable art. It was an art of survival. It was a school of survival. It was a school of streetology because he, his art wasn't directed so much for tournament purposes as it was to be able to live in this, the, the perilous type of situations and environments that, as a people, that we live in, he, he, he was he was gentle, but he was deadly, and um, and his his compassion as a person and as a human being was not known to many. That was the compassion and the the the, the heart of this this deadly deadly warrior. I think that he would probably admonish us to uh, keep, the, keep the, the original intent of what he had laid down in the direction that he wanted to take the art form in. Um, and to be able to particularly be able to um, disseminate it and give it back particularly to the children who's coming up behind us because that's, the, that's our greatest uh, resources. As he's going that way, he's tearing his whole right he's off of it. You know, Doc mentioned me. Um, he taught me everything about from the spiritual, the mental, and the physical sense of martial art. And uh, I, I can never repay the blessings that I got. And everything came from the heart. And Soke taught me how to be a true fighting warrior. And I, and I love Soke from the bottom of my heart. I can go out into a gang and fight a gang and won't even trip on it because of what I've been taught from my instructors. And I love you guys forever. What is up, dude? I met the doc as a child growing up in the nation of Islam. What his legacy means to me, he touched so many people the world over. He showed and loved and shared love and all that he knew with all that he came in contact with. He was very particular on his system of self-defense and simplicity. He really was concerned with if it's practical enough to use it in a real life situation. He didn't care about how high you can kick or how amazing your technique may appear to be. He never saw to make himself more than what he was because he knew who he was and what he could do. And I work to maintain the spirit of Sanukis and simplicity by knowing what or who I am and what I can do. And uh, so what Doc means to me is he breathed life into my way of life and he gave me a natural uh, the knowledge of a natural defense against any enemy that would come to me and try and take what God has given to me he has given to me the way and uh, life and the way and that I say 
eye to eye. Heart to heart. Thank you. Okay, I started with uh, Dr. Moses Paul when I was seven, eight years old. Before we met, he met up with my instructor. His name was Gus, we call him Buster. And uh, I think he was, you know, that he was passing away, he had leukemia. So he asked the doctor to take care of me, so he was turning me over to him. But before he turned us over to him, he told us in our brain, and young and naive, don't know, that you could take him. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. So one time Doc and I was working out, got me into a lock, and of course I slipped out of it. And then I met a volcano, he <laughs> bled my nose. So ever since then, I was a wise Boshito. <laughs> but uh, the lot that we did together, uh, his wife Betty, Tina, Cheryl, we all grew up together. We'd take them as our, <coughs> excuse, me, <coughs> excuse me, take them as our little sisters. So we've been, uh, what is it, the um, Linden Plaza area. We used to be in the projects, training all kinds of ways. Everything that he did, any seminars or different events, he always took a posse with him that was very strong, myself and others that had gone along to represent the side Lucas. So it's a lot that we did. Um, Tournament-wise, we went out to represent the side Lucas rule. Um, a few people, I can say truly, and that's devoted in terms of when you say side Lucas. The two warriors that have been out there, sweat, blood, and all, and trying to represent versus what's going on, but we won't get into that. But all in all, I... Um, the doctor did a lot for me. Um, he helped me be a true warrior. I used to always love to fight. <laughs> but he always got on me on that. But there's a lot a lot of things that we did. We did the World Fair. We did a thing that Aaron Banks had. We had a month tour around the world. Two days here, two days there. But it was really interesting. We got to explore a lot of places being attached with him. So, of course, he's going to take the shotguns with him. So, <laughs> we had a good time and, and uh, training and enjoying each other. So. But it was a lot, lot there too, so I really, you know, miss him, I love him, I always be representing him. So, and as I said, people see me, they see the doc, as well as success to me. You know? so, uh, we used to be at the dojo, 554 Atlantic Avenue, 6 in the morning at 12 at night, ongoing training. There's no such thing as tired, you continue to train. But the uh, energy and the spirit was totally different versus today. They do an hour and have a cataract attack. You can't work them hard like you want without being sued. You can't touch them. So it's, uh, you have to keep your own spirit up. You might find a few that you can work with to maintain the sort of level where we were, but not quite. But as far as trying to, back in the day, nah, I don't see that Bushido code at all. It's not like even um, a lot of the tournaments, you know, it's sort of flimsy, it's soft politics, everything changed. Because when we fought, you put a adhesive tape on, if you had a mouthpiece, put that on, and you something, no such thing as safety equipment. As a matter of fact, you get so hard, hit hard, hit so hard, you almost score your own point. <laughs> you don't want to get hit no more, but the fighting is not the same. The energy is not, it's more politics and money, so. But I try to maintain the old school. You know, people still come and train. They say it takes long, but six to seven months, you know, eight months <coughs> before a belt, which they earn, you know, you still have to keep that old way they earn when they get to appreciate it more. So it changed a lot, So, but I'm still saying old school. <laughs> well, as I said earlier, the doc, I trained with the doc since I was uh, started at seven, eight years old and still trained with the doc. So it's not that he's gone, but the spirit is always there. It is embedded in us to maintain the continue to try to keep the system alive. Uh, the only sad thing is that, you know, him stepping off and leaving such a, um, a gap with a lot of the folks promoting himself, trying to abuse his name, it bothers me, it really upsets me. But the thing is that the true warrior, if it's something that I know that I don't earn, I don't want it. If I didn't work where we represent uh, you, uh, yourself, GM, when you're there, we represent, we were Sinukas, we went out, we fought, we fought in Sunnyside Garden, Manhattan Center, we fought and represent the doc. Everything that the doc did, we all was one with the doc to try to keep things going and we're trying to unite. I'm trying to be a peace type person to try to unite to build a system up. That's why I sort of had to go in towards the VFK right? because anybody come across our doorsteps or my doorsteps, they're going to earn what they think. If they have one leg, one arm, whatever, prove that you're least able to represent the system. Each one! Each one! Let's go! <laughs> well, I first met Doc first met him, I was, uh, I was nine, 
I was about nine years old. When I came and I started, I clearly wasn't good at all. I was just beginning. And there were so many good persons that were in the class, and I just wanted to be, you know, good like them. Well, criteria for Doc in joining his classes was, was just working hard, you know. Uh, and that's something that you did in his class. You absolutely worked extremely hard, and, and there was no let up uh, until he let up. You know, uh, Doc came to me and told me, uh, he said, listen, you know you have something and I want you to name it. I said, Doc, I'm, I'm fine with what, <laughs> what I have. I have Sadukis. I don't need uh, uh, anything. And he, you know, uh, he said, I want you to name it. He came to me again. I mean, not, not another time in the same day. And, and said, uh, did you hear what I said? I said, no, I want you to name it. I said, um, Doc, you know, and, and uh, for those of you who uh, uh, know Doc, uh, I, I won't say the words that he said, but I'll just say that they were uh, very uh, poignant <laughs> and direct. So, um, so I said, okay, fine. I had to think about how I would do this. It was very difficult for me to even consider or, or want to have anything different. So I said, well, uh, I, I will do what I had uh, in my mind and that was always to bring the family together so I, I decided to just use the acronym of VSK because V stood for his teacher which is of course our teacher as well uh, Grand Professor Florinda Visitacion and uh, the S was Sanukis of course and the K uh, is Kumiteru Jiu Jitsu who um, uh, is also my teacher and I came he was a, uh, my brother in the art but he was a huge brother a big brother who was the uh, icon and, uh, as far as the dojo and whatnot was concerned and I saw him you know he was in his 20s which is incredible to think about that I had the pleasure of being around him at at an early age like that, in an early age for him. And he was incredibly fast. And to me, he was extremely huge. You know, he had a small waist, huge upper body, and hands and feet like you wouldn't believe. When, I, when we talk about Doc, see, you know, some want to just say Doc, but you have to know the lineage to understand him. Because when you look at Grand Professor B, you find that he was a man who went from studying various things. I mean, he may have studied with someone for a short period of time to get just, just uh, the basis of what was being taught because he was already a master and a master teacher. So he went in to study various things and that was the same kind of way. He, who already was a master teacher, would go and study Aikido. Who would go and study uh, uh, other things like Bando and certain other, other styles that would enhance who he was, which was and is Sanukis. So Sanukis is a makeup of so many different things put into the vessel of Dr. Moses Powell. wasn't Japanese or Chinese, it just didn't look real to me. So when I came and started studying, when I first saw Doc, I mean, it made martial arts more, more real to me. And now that I look back at the, the Samurai Sunday, I can kind of see exactly where a lot of that comes from. Especially for that job. Yeah. Rook, you right here? I too grew up in the 70s, looking at the Bruce Lee films, Chuck Norris, you know, good guys wearing black, not good guys being black. 
you know. So when I saw Grandmaster Anthony come in 95, I was just entering into the ranks uh, in the Nation of Islam and it blew my mind, you know. I had never seen black men do that, although I did train uh, in Taekwondo under uh, Master Carlos Alaviston, but I hadn't seen this. And then in the first seminar that we had in 95 in Coles Park, right, that's when I met who became basically my grandfather, Dr. Moses Powell. And uh, at that point in time, you know, he was uh, just sitting in the chair, had his cane next to him. I'm like, uh, you know, hey, you know, until he did a technique on me. <laughs> on my cuticles. <laughs> I never even knew I had cuticles until he touched them. So, long and short of it, man, you know, that's uh, who defines this. I mean, that is my my spirit, one of my spiritual grandfathers, just as grandmaster, is my father in this art. To me, Dr. Moses Powell is the spiritual um, and mental evolution of martial arts. Um, I've studied martial arts and have enjoyed martial arts in formal and informal settings since about the age of nine. Um, it wasn't until I was introduced to Doc through Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad that I began to understand the more contemporary uh, form of martial arts. Um, a lot of systems still use techniques and ways that were relevant um, in feudal Japan or in the battlefields in China. However, the scenery of the battlefield has changed. Now we deal with concrete and asphalt. So of course the, the, the combative um, techniques have to change. And that is what Doc really brought to the forefront in my heart. So when I train, I train with that in mind. Just the introduction, uh, Dr. Moses Powell is the epitome of seeing an idea come to reality. Uh, to see, to hear about martial arts and then see it transcend on a whole different level. Not just on the physical level, but also on the mental and spiritual. And just to hear what he's, his, his idea of expressing a technique through words takes more than a month or two or probably even a year to truly understand. It's, it's no fun when the rabbit's got the gun. It may sound hilarious, but then as you learn to unfold and grow in the heart, then you get a better meaning of what it said. He uh, goes beyond what I saw in reading a book about martial arts. Uh, he, he, he is the book that comes alive. Uh, and just his, his aura, uh, when he stepped into a room, changed the whole atmosphere of the room. His technique changed the whole technique that you just saw from the side until you were touched by him. Then you just stayed as a participant instead of the reality. <laughs> started to appreciate uh, this art because number one, it's about self-defense. And since I was never really the kind of person that really wanted to be in a fight, this particular art offered me the opportunity to be able to protect myself without sweating a whole lot, without having to do kicks to somebody's head, you know, worry about whether or not I was going to pull a hamstring muscle. You know, just it just allowed me to be able to take care of myself in a nice, womanly manner. You know, not mess up your hair if you don't want to, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but um, I would like to say too that, uh, you know, the stuff is real serious. It's real, it can be real deadly, and it's not something to play with. And I appreciate all the things that they teach us because it's not just, a, uh, you learn a lot, not just how to defend yourself, but you also learn, you know, about the body, what the body can and cannot do, and why this art works so well. You know, the dock represents water to me, you know, water can be still, it can flow, it can be slow, it can be fast, uh, it gives life, but then it also can kill. And nevertheless, the bottom line is that we all need water, and that's how I see Doc. He's giving us something that we all need, and we can use it, we can be slow with it, we can be fast with it, we can heal and help with it, or we can do what we have to do, we have to defend ourselves, and, and that's taken it to its limits. You know, I, I can't even really talk about so much uh, Doc.
I mentioned in my teacher more because, you know, as with all of us, I mean, we would know Dr. Powell if it was not for Grandmaster Anthony. I met, I met my teacher when he was uh, carrying the title professor uh, nearly 16 years ago. And uh, from the first time I met my teacher, I got a technique, which was similar to the conversation I had with Dr. Powell over the phone a little time before I met my teacher. And I always wanted to be his student. And Dr. Powell has become my teacher. And I always referred to him as my grand professor or my grandfather. And I said this to him before. And he said, that's right, you know, that's right. Because I look at my teacher as my father in many different ways, as well as martial arts. And I just want to say that I'm so glad to be a part of the VSK Jiu Jitsu family. Uh, I'm glad that my teacher told me that Doc wanted a family and not a federation because federations don't operate like families do and um, Doc is the spirit behind my teacher, the spirit. You know, that simplicity is uh, just exactly what we're supposed to be, real simplistic, you know, the truth is it's easy when you find yourself in agreement. Where it's difficult when you find yourself on the other side of it. The, the doc, what he means to me, he has given me a great appreciation of the art. Um, in that, I have I come from a background of karate, and I really couldn't. I didn't really like martial arts. My father was my instructor. Probably had something to do with it. Um, but it wasn't until I met Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad um, that I learned about the doc and just to see that this black man um, could do what he could do. Um, I wasn't, you know, I always thought martial arts was about the punches and the kicks and this and that, but it wasn't until I saw the mat work, the rolls, the falls, I had never seen anything like that in my life. I'm like, what is this? And, um, you know, then I saw the warrior within and I saw this, big, huge guy doing a, a rollout on one finger. And um, that just fascinated me.
study martial arts because just in case somebody tried to attack me or anything else, I I um, know what to how to defend myself so I don't get hurt. I study martial arts so I can learn how to how to defend myself if someone tries to attack me. Rock and Most Problems is one of my good teachers, Grandmaster's teacher, so he's also one of my teachers that I respect. You know. He is like not only a master, but he's like a, a father to all of us. And he taught grandmaster, so he could teach the other masters, so they could teach us. What I get out of teaching children, I get a better understanding of the art. Uh, as I was uh, being trained in it, you see it from one perspective. But when you begin to teach it, and teach it to children in particular, you begin to see a lot of your mistakes and correct a lot of your mistakes, and it makes you a better martial artist. Well, what I feel um, as a uh, individual who have actually trained as a child in the martial arts, and I tell you, the practicing of uh, this was was incredible. Um, I had the opportunity again to be with, you know, Dr. Moses Powell on the mat. I, I trained with him, you know, uh, at a time when he was uh, in his 20s. He had not even, he had not gotten to 30. I, I was around him at that time and, and you know, I, there was no let up on the children, you know. Uh, there was concern, there was care because he really, you know, Dr. Moses Powell really cared about the children in the martial arts. and. You know, he cared enough to to make sure that who was training us, you know, if it wasn't him, uh, who was training us, that they were that they cared about us. And I I'll tell you that you know he was called Master Musa back in the day, and you know, uh, but he didn't want me to to call him Master Musa. You know, he told me he said just call me Brother Moses. You know, call me Brother Moses or Brother Musa. And, uh, you know, I said, yes, sir, uh, Master Musa, you know, because I, I always had and have been taught to, you know, maintain the respect. And I, I appreciated it. And I, I love the fact that he did that. And uh, he's not the only one that, that, that does that. Humility for the master is so important. But, you know, this is, you know, about the children. And, and I just like the, the fact that he gave me the opportunity uh, to experience humility, to experience, you know, his uh, humility and and his, uh, you know, lowering his head, bowing his head, so that um, the 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 beauty of um, courtesy would would pass even over his to someone else, you know. So again, that was wonderful. It is important for us to 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 continue the legacy of training our youth and, and our children because they are the extension of us and if we do not work and train the children then we are destroying the arts so those of us who do not train or, or, or think that is a task or, or is just difficult to train uh, children if we feel like that then you um, really are putting yourself in a position where it ends the life of the family in which you are responsible for. Where you find a family of, uh, uh, where there are no children, you find a family that has an, ex has an ending period. But as long as you have youth around you, as long as you have children around you, as long as you have uh, even the spirit of youth around you, you, you have long life. You know, I have a wonderful respect for the, the, the training and teaching of children. And I will always, always, as long as I have the ability, and as long as I can teach and talk, I will always say that uh, and have some child <laughs> uh, around that can keep, you know, me youthful and to keep our art in existence because if you're training the children, then you are training your future. We're nonviolent with people us? who are nonviolent with us. But we are not nonviolent with anyone who is violent with us.
of a master here today, you reflect your master teacher. You want to walk like him. You want to talk like her. But you start by having an object in front of you that you admire, admire, admire.